All right, let's take this further. Let's go south. News reports indicate that South Africa's government of national unity that was installed last June is making some good economic progress. And these are shown in the modest return of investment flows, in the rising level of business confidence, and the reform in the power sector that stayed the curse of stable electricity in Africa's most advanced economy. Joining me to discuss these and more about South Africa is Chris Hart, the executive chairman at Impact Investment Group in Johannesburg. A good evening to you, sir. It's good to see you again on the show tonight. No, thank you very much. It is good to be back. No, it is good to be back, and you're smiling more broadly than the last time that we spoke. Give me a sense of how the economic reforms are progressing five months since the new government of national unity was put in place. I think the basic underlying story with since the government of national unity has been put in place has basically been an improving con confidence and an improvement in sentiment. So uh, with improvement of sentiment, um, we've seen a return of positive capital flows in the equity and bond markets, for instance. We've seen the ability to actually uh, have the first set of rate cuts, and we probably will see more. Uh, you know, in the, the next few months. But when it comes to actual real tangible reforms uh, to try and re roll back some of the financial repression in the, in the overall economy, for instance, we haven't really seen uh, anything tangible yet. I think the medium term budget, we had some indication to do something, but still the, the budget priorities still are to shift resources to the uh, consumption side of the economy rather than the investment side of the economy. Um, so we still need to see the, the real tangible reforms, but there's an under, almost a launch pad um, where the, the underlying sentiment is positive. The government of national unity is still uh, fairly tentative. It's starting to settle down, but you, you, you've basically got strange, <coughs> strange bedfellows. <coughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that, yes. Chris. You've got to uh, let's give you just about a second uh, uh, there yes. to, to, to grab a, a glass of water. Just <coughs> as you were uh, talking about, uh, let me take it from there very quickly, uh, Chris, because of course we're looking at what the government of national unity is talking about. You talk about the underlying. Uh, uh, factors uh, folks are uh, seeing business confidence returning into South Africa despite the whole brouhaha around the elections back on May 29 when President Ramaphosa looks like uh, he's going to, not going to get back into office. The whole very divisive politics down the line. The ANC, the ruling party since 1994, getting into real crisis, no thanks to, of course, some political infighting and a breakaway of Jacob Zuma, a former president forming his own political party and getting back into the, uh, into the, uh, into the band or the bandwagon. So all of that, politically speaking, speaking, Chris Hart. Now, what are the facts on the table as far as the impact that the new administration is making across the key important sectors of the economy. Yes, confidence is returning, broadly speaking. But in terms of key sectors of the economy, what are we learning on the ground? What are you seeing? Well, I think there's an emphasis on agriculture. There is a desire to see agriculture being underpinned and supported, and certainly uh, industrialization, the um, uh, to attract manufacturing back to South Africa, we've seen a long period of deindustrialization um, under fairly um, uh, uh, difficult circumstances. I think the stabilization of the electricity grid is important and the, the, the resumption of downward trend in interest rates and inflation is also very important. Um, basically, the, um, the wind is at our back, let's put it that way. And the economy is poised to actually experience a little bit of a, uh, you know, get out of that. It's, it's about to get out of that rut of, of one sub 1% 1 growth that we've seen over the last uh, 15 years or so. Uh, we may actually see 2 to 3% growth uh, next year, for instance, and that's, that's starting to, to do much better. But that's still on the back of sentiment.
And and, and the problem is with the US, with their doge, uh, you know, against government efficiency department that they're setting up, um, it provides a challenge because if you've got capital, let's say you've got an investor sitting in London and you say, where do I invest in the world? Right. Uh, if you've, you're cutting regulation and taxes in the US, you say that's got to be a better deal than, say, trying to invest in Africa. So what has Africa got to do? And I'm saying Africa in general, the different countries in Africa have to respond by cutting taxes and regulation as well, not to be comparable, but to be competitive. Um, and that, that, that is a need that we're going to have to see next year. And I think the, um, there, there might be a little bit more political inertia uh, in, in um, South Africa to actually follow suit, um, uh, whether they will or not. I'm not sure, but uh, it's unlikely that they're going to see the, the dramatic cut in regulation and taxes that we, we're likely to see in the US over the next two years or so. Um, so that is a challenge. But I think the, the, the point is, is that the, the improvement of confidence will see at least local capital bedding down. And um, we, as I said, the, we, we hope that the electricity situation is stabilized. There's two factors with the electricity. It's load shedding. In other words, the availability of electricity is the first factor. And the second is the price. And so price security is still a factor, you, you know, because prices are being raised at a very rapid rate um, and, and way above the inflation rate. And that's basically putting South Africa into a position of uh, well, lack of competitive. Low energy cost was a competitive advantage in South Africa, and now that, is, that has disappeared. Yes. And that's going to be a, a challenge that we face. I, I see that. Uh, that report talking about the fact that there'll be no load shedding again until 2029. Is that a realistic outlook considering the progress that everyone thinks ESCOM and the new Minister of Electricity is, is making? You talk about the ESCOMs asking for 34 percent or thereabout. I don't know what percentage yeah. of that in terms of electricity. Uh, uh, a price inflation is about uh, 4 percent or 4.4 percent around what the Reserve Bank is uh, uh, looking at in terms of a range. So right now, how are you folks coping with this rise in electricity? Uh, you've got to pay for a rate. Electricity, stable electricity mm. is not free. So, so basically what's, what's happening is that there's still a, um, quite a lot of momentum to continue to invest in alternative uh, energy supplies where people are looking at self-generation to help at least secure themselves some uh, buffer from, um, uh, from the price hikes. So, so that's still continuing. Uh, the actual supply situation is still delicately balanced. If the economy starts to grow very rapidly, we will see load shedding coming back because the, the, the supply situation is not completely secure at this stage. But as more and more private sector capacity gets installed, the actual uh, dependence on ESCON diminishes in time. And the, the reforms in the electricity sector where the distribution is being separated from um, uh, f from generation, uh, we'll also see, uh, I think, further uh, diversification away what f from what we see as the traditional uh, state-run utility model that we've had uh, for the last, um, well, 50, 60 years or so. Um, so. So, again, that's part of the opportunity that we're seeing in South Africa is uh, it is the alternative energy is still something that uh, is in very, a very investable sector in South Africa. Um, and uh, we're likely to see that filter through to uh, the, the capacity for alternative energy. So things like solar and wind extend to other countries in Africa. That's one of the things that South Africa can probably start um, sharing, uh, which will help alleviate the energy uh, um, deficit that we we have in other countries uh, in our immediate vicinity, um, like Zambia, for instance, and Mozambique, etc. I think we can actually help uh, facilitate regional growth with investment into alternative energy. 
Well, uh, at the heart of this conversation, uh, broadly speaking for South Africa, is, is interest rates, exchange rate, inflation, and how do you think the uh, Reserve Bank should decide on Thursday, two days from now, uh, the, the economists are saying there should be another at least 25 basis points to take the repo rate down to 7.75%. How will that impact on bank lending rate and investment inflows in, into South Africa? You're an investment executive. What's your outlook on that? Yeah, yeah certainly I, I do believe that a further rate cut is, um, is um, justified and it would be in the order of about 50 basis points that, that I would expect. Um, the the Reserve Bank, if they don't start cutting, you know, keep cutting rates at the next few meetings, may well fall behind the curve at itself and um, over constrain the economy. Um, but a lot of the economic constraints still need real economic reforms to, uh, to be affected to have some longevity and some um, legs to, to boost the economy with a reduction of, of uh, what I call the uh, statutory and regulatory costs, if that can get re reduced and some of the impediments taken out of the way, that'll provide an enormous boost in its own right uh, as, as resources get allocated better in the, in the country rather than uh, you know, trying to meet regulatory requirements and other financial repression measures that we've got. So I think all of these are are really possible with the government of national unity because you are getting different thinking. You don't get an in, inbred mm -hmm. echo chamber uh, that you had previously that bad ideas sort of, you know, get legs. Bad ideas can be cut down at the infancy, for instance, rather than um, allowed to, 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 to manifest. And I think there, there are going to be some... Uh, policy risks that have, that have been raised more recently, uh, such as um, uh, basic uh, income grant, for instance, and national health insurance. I think all of that is going to be paid back and eased back quite a bit, um, you know, over the next few months as, as people realize that we've got to actually improve the fiscus, we've got to bring down the debt to GDP ratio, and that's going to be a long term um, uh, uh, how because our program that we we've got to commit to, and that means restraining public sector wage bill, for instance. All of these things need to 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 take out the crowding out of the private sector and actually try and get the private sector a freer rein mm -hmm. to actually uh, drive economic growth. Uh, let's summarize and, and wrap it up on the exchange rates. Uh, exchange rate. It looks like 18 to the dollar looks like the new handle. The rand keep yeah. flipping in, out, in and out a little bit, a few notches on a daily basis. Today, uh, the rand went back a few notches above 18 against the dollar. What do you think the outlook is on exchange rates? Is 18 uh, rand the new uh, level against the dollar for the rand? out to the end of the end of the year, into the new year, 2025. What's your take on that, Chris? I think that I think that's a fair assessment. And I think that sort of level will hold um, for a good period in there. You'll have fluctuations around that, obviously. But I think for a good period of 2025, you'll see that. Um, the, the government of national unity must hold. And I think there's, when I say the strange bedfellows, I think both... Uh, of the major parties in the government of national unity uh, might be uncomfortable with each other, but they just know that the alternative is much worse. So it's, it's, it's almost like keeping them together. Um, and, and I think with that, we'll, we'll see um, better economic reforms, better economic policies coming through. And that may actually, if the government of national unity holds, we'll see low inflation and the, the rent being able to hold that level of 18 to the dollar for much longer um, and, and that. But ultimately, it is on a weakening trend. But at the end of the day, I think we can see that uh, that 18 level generally hold through 2025 as long as the government of national unity holds. So there, there is a big proviso on that. If it doesn't hold and we actually shift, uh, to, you know, to have a leftward shift uh, to that, it, it, then anything can happen. 
the, the stability will be shattered, the confidence will be shattered, and everything will come to a screaming halt. But I think we're looking at maybe growth uh, in the order of 3% next year. I think that can be easily achieved uh, given the, the current uh, winds uh, supporting um, trends that are reinforcing each other at the moment. Yeah, Chris Hart, uh, we really appreciate your optimism on the new government of national unity in Pretoria. Thank you so much for your perspectives, as always, on South Africa's economic headlines. Do have a great evening. Thank you so much. In Thank you. Chris Hart, the executive chairman at uh, Impact Investment Group. Mm -hmm.